It was somewhat of a tough weekend for myself. Caught a cold over the weekend, so I am a bit sick, but it's not going to stop me from pumping out a Supercoach video. It did look like it was going to be a tough week for the side, but somehow, I don't know, it's a bit of a miracle, really, but I moved up 81 spots off a 17.06. I really don't know how that happened. It looked like a bad week, but I'm, I'll definitely take that. I've stayed around the mark, inside the top 2,500 now. It's really a miracle, to be honest. This was the week I was supposed to be extremely screwed, and I didn't even move down, so I'll definitely take that. One three out of three league matchups once again. That was huge. So let's move on to the team. 16 players played, so I'll definitely take what I got. The trades I ended up doing were Answorth to Clark, Bolter to Boak, and Robbie Young to Bewley. I know Young only made 22k, which is pretty much nothing, but I needed an extra person. There wasn't really anyone else I could have traded out, so it had to be Young. Defense just had the two guys playing in Zach Williams and Xavier Dersma. The GWS guys, they were massive standouts. Williams, Kelly, Cornelia, all of them unbelievable. Great way to end the round as well, seeing scores like that. And Dersma, his break even is low. Still made a solid amount of cash. But this week his break even's up to a 72, so I'll probably keep him for this week. But he's definitely going to be traded to Rory Sloan for round 15. In the midfield, we've gone through the GWS guys. Great stuff. Nat Fife is vice captain. You take that. And he ended up getting the captaincy. Paddy Cripps targeted all night after his video game type performance against the Lions. The Bulldogs weren't having any of it. And they made sure Cripps wasn't going to make a big impact against them. Matt Crouch didn't show up in the first half really, so good recovery, but you just want to see a four-quarter performance out of him. And the rookies stack, it's going to be tough to let him go. You can't hold rookies forever though, but Sydney stack has been a gem. Started at basement price, and he's almost made it to 400k. Just unreal. And Brett Bewley, Dylan Clark. Bewley had a massive first half. He was on track for a really solid score, but didn't do much in the second half, which is disappointing. In Dylan Clark, he had a quiet first half. He was pretty much the opposite. Quiet first half, but picked it up as the game went on. And that's a solid score from him. And the forward line, you love seeing that. Walters, Boak, Marshall. Walters with six goals. He has been in scintillating form past few rounds and Boak has the new recruit you like seeing that I was a bit worried after his slow start but he worked his way into the game got I think 36 touches and a goal good stuff and Rowan Marshall Jared Witz is a tough ruckman to go up against but Marshall had a huge fourth quarter so that's great to see and the rookies Baker didn't quite beat his break even but didn't go down too much so you take that and Dylan Moore came back in for wing guard he was solid, but like Bewley, big first half, but didn't do much in the second half at all. Hopefully he keeps his spot. I feel like with Hawthorne struggling quite a bit, you got to persist with the kids. And I feel like Dylan Moore deserves to keep his spot on that notion, but we'll have to see what happens. And Josh Begley hasn't been the greatest. Did kick a couple of cheapy goals in the fourth quarter to boost the score a tiny bit. And with Jake Stringer injured, We'll see if he keeps his spot on. I believe he should. Oh, I, I don't know. To be honest, I really don't know. If Stringer doesn't play, I feel like obviously that will boost his chances, but I'm really not sure. But that will do it for the team. Vice captain and captain this week. There's always a variety of options, which is good to have, but we're going to keep it simple for now. I'm going to give it to the two rucks. And of course, we've got to make some subs. So before trades, I'd have 19 playing. It's really 20, but Begley stuck on the bench, which is a bit unfortunate. But he'll be looped with Dylan Moore. For trades, this week I am planning to 
let go of the Richmond guys. It's been a great run. Bolter, Baker, and Stack. They've been unreal. All getting to solid prices and we've made some great cash from those guys. So thank you for your service, but it is time. And I'm not sure with the downgrades. I'm honestly thinking of just bringing in a mid forward loop. And you never know. North might give him a game at some point, but Kyron Hayden is the guy I'm planning to bring in. Just a basement price dual position loop. And for stack, in comes Tom Stewart. I wanted to bring him in about a month ago, but obviously couldn't. He is at a lower price than when I would have brought him in a month ago, so that's, that's helpful, but it is time. 175.6k in the bank. That finishes my defense. Hope to see Lockie Whitfield back in soon. That's how the team should look. Now it is 20 on field and 21 playing all together with Begley and Moore being looped. So how I see my team looking come full primo, my defense is done. I'd probably trade down Marty Hoare to Griffin Logue. I want to bring in Griffin Logue to be D7. So in the event that a defender has a one-week injury or something like that, Griffin Logue can be the cover for that one week. His job security is really good with Alex Pierce being out long-term and Logue filling in his spot. So I'd want to bring him in. The only problem with him is that he is a bit pricey for a rookie at 164k. But his job security is really good. So he's probably the one to come in. In the midfield, there's six primos right now. Kelly obviously needs to be moved to the forward line. Obviously, Roy Sloan. Talked about him. He'll be in round 15. And the last one, I've talked about him being a pod. And right now, I'm leaning towards Mitch Duncan taking that last spot. Only 2%, I think, have him right now. Priced at 587k, still a bit high, but his break even is a 155, so hopefully he gets a decent drop. And I'll pick him up in a couple weeks. And the forward line's obviously done. Kelly, like I said, Kelly needs to be moved there. So Danger, Walters, Boke, Marshall, Heaney. Then once Kelly goes into the forward line, that's it. So we're in a good spot there. But I'd say the glaring hole in my forward line is not having Josh Dunkley. I'm not sure if I'll be able to bring him at any point this season unless I get a season-ending injury to a mid or a forward. I don't think I'll be able to do it. Preferably, I'd love to have Dunkley in my team over Heaney, but I wouldn't have enough trades to do a luxury sort of swap like that. I think I'd only have two or three trades once I get to full primo, so I'm just going to have to see what happens in terms of players and injuries and all that stuff, and just hope for the best because luck the past couple of years hasn't been great in terms of the team getting injured and suspended. So as per usual, we'll move on to leagues. In my own league, I beat Nick quite comfortably. We won't look into that much more, but I am sitting at first after that percentage booster, so that's huge. And in Shorty's league, I got lucky again with matchups. This was the week I expected to take a loss, but like I said, got lucky with matchups and got a big win. Staying at first, a game ahead of second, and I think three games ahead of eighth spot, so that's huge. So that will do it for this video. Hopefully you guys didn't get hit by the round 13 carnage too badly. And I'll see you guys in the next video.